pleasure to announce Bruno, our next speaker. Bruno is from uh, Wipro. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, technology enablement, empowering people, transforming experiences. So we're going to hear a lot of interesting um, things from the past, how technology has changed and enabled people and their experiences and about the future as well. And I'd also like to mention Wipro is one of the platinum partners of this uh, summit. So it's especially great to have you here and being a partner to us. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you how you're also helping your customers as a partner. Bruno, stage is yours. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, what you can do with 30 minutes briefing, it's amazing. Um, 30 seconds, not minutes. And um, Andreas is right, I want to not talk about Wipro. You will get hopefully a glimpse of what is Wipro. I want to talk about the technology we all experienced. I see all of you are older than 10 years, so you shouldn't see anything new to you, and especially looking forward in the future. Over the past 10 years, we all have witnessed massive shifts I'm not speaking about the COVID, which enabled some of the technologies faster than we believed, but it redefined industries, and I will speak about it. But I think I'm more optimistic what lies ahead, with many, many question marks, what's coming and what, it will, and what will move us further. Technologies have one element, which is change, which is about the fear, the letting go, everyone, you know this famous quote, who wants change, everyone raises the hand, who wants to do actually the change, not so much. So some of the technologies I will pitch about, they are maybe enabled, not yet utilized. Many companies we work together, they have not yet done the breakthrough. For example, blockchain and so on. This is what I want to mention here, change is at the forefront and you as a leader, if you are on the product, on the tech side, doesn't really matter. Change is core for our success of the future. In my presentation, as I said, I will go back in 10 technologies very fast. I only have 20 minutes and in 10 technologies in the future. Uh, I did a lot of research. What could be them? That could be wrong. There could be wrong predictions. Otherwise, I could invest now there. I'm not an investor doing this. So 10 technologies, what shaped the last decade? Let me start with some numbers. And out of the numbers, you might get some drivers out of that. They're massive numbers, estimated based on research. They might be right or wrong. It's global numbers I mentioned here. Millions and billions and trillions of transactions enabled. What are those? Let me start with the cybersecurity. I think all of us remember 10, 15 years back, the painful uh, software we had to install to enable, are we protected, are we not protected, to prolong the subscription, otherwise you're at high risk. I think nowadays we are protected from the companies who don't take care that much, but we should still care, of course. There's a massive shift from the proactive cyber measurements. 95% of cyber attacks are blocked before they each, uh, reach users. Also, the latest AI helps here a lot to detect anomalies in the networks, for example. It's also important on the user side, the users there are still a concern about privacy and all these elements. I guess this is clear, this will remain. I think this, that's also okay to go there. This concern of surveillance and monitor, being monitored, this remains. And this is also one thing we need to address openly with transparency and good and fair policies. The next one is 3D printing. If you don't have it, you print it. I think it's a bit an extreme and a bold provocative quote here. Uh, yesterday, on the tech exec day, uh, I had the privilege to speak to a CTO of a very large manufacturing company. And he said, yeah, before uh, I was pouring the iron uh, for some uh, stuff, now we print it, but we don't have to prove over 10, 15 years. Same material, same size, same shape, but the endurance, uh, the chemistry underneath, uh, this is not yet fully solved. Yet it helped a lot of doctor hospitals for skin replacements. Uh, for prototyping, there's a lot of shift, and I get, I don't have yet a 3D printer at home because I simply don't see the use yet, but it might also change. I guess the access and the prices dropped significantly in the last decade. Edge computing, I'm a big fan of edge computing. When this was rising up on the horizons uh, 10 years back, roughly, uh, 
it took a moment to understand what is edge computing. I think if you would have all the data in the data center or in the cloud, this would be simply a waste because we all know edge computing is not needed for everything. So you need to take the source from the place where you are. One example is cars. Let's imagine your car needs a connectivity. And you're once you're in a tunnel, you might be in, in trouble. Um, you do it uh, in your car, the assessments, and you take the data you need to make the, to make the decisions. It also helps the people to have much faster experiences on your devices, the smartphones, and so on. And I think the, um, edge computing is also on the forefront for the next decade, a big player and uh, enabler for us in making the faster decisions and bringing the user experience up. Biometric uh, identification, I think uh, this is also companies have changed a lot um, in giving access. Some companies that block everything has to be um, dual identification. I think all of you are using that. If not, you might be at risk, that's clear. But having fingerprints, iris scans or face scans, I think there's a lot of shift which enabled user experience greatly. I'm a very big a happy fan of that enablement. Also, there is a bit the risk of the surveillance, what happens with my fingerprints, but in the end, I gave up when you travel to the US or to India, which is normal with my company I'm working for. You give your fingerprints and you trust they're landing in safe hands. So, but I guess we as a user, we see a good positive shift in this area. Augmented reality and virtual reality, I guess the last 10 years, we have also witnessed they're closer together. I remember 2011, I was in Harvard studying for two months, and VAUE, I can mention that as a public case, they announced about augmented reality. I didn't like the case, actually, because we can get the lowest of the lowest paid people. We just give them the Googles, they drill the nuts and the bolts where they need them, but it enabled the industry to be much faster, much more precise. In the end, the quality, the enablement they achieved with that is simply mind-blowing. Now it's more the gaming, uh, many industries are using that. Uh, you can see a quote up there, uh, many surgeons and doctors are trained with this um, and it's simply there and I really believe this will also be a big shift going forward. I still don't believe we will see, like when Apple, Googles were released last year in America, hundreds of people on the road with the ski masks, I call them the ski mask. I hope not, but yeah, there's a use case for some areas. I don't feel comfortable for one or two hours to wear them, but I think uh, it's also someone needs to start somewhere and we will see more shifts in this direction. Another one, I joined Damir uh, Quantum Basel presentation this morning, and I was so happy to hear from him that Switzerland is leading. They have a very bold vision. If you have not participated, try to get the slides. They want to win the Nobel Prize in Switzerland with this quantum investment. And quantum, for, for some of you, it's quite far away. Uh, it's PhD material or even higher. I'm by far not an expert. It will not replace normal computing. It will uh, enable transactions, various billions and transactions in medicine, in pharma, whatever, uh, the large scale. And I'm really happy that Switzerland takes a big step in this direction. And I think quantum, we will see this later, not surprisingly again. I think uh, there could be a big step going forward and we need more speed, we need more transactions um, to, to simulate uh, data and so on. And I think we are just in the very early stage of quantum, as Tommy said himself this early morning. Blockchain was one of the big hypes. I guess you all witnessed this seven, eight years back. There's a lot of breakthrough, there's still a lot of complexity, uncertainty, especially when you speak about the currency. Um, I think the blockchain curve has twisted. Many people predict it is the third big wave in the industry. I think the biggest wave was the internet, the second one mobile. And now does people say the third big wave is AI. I'm not so sure, my personal opinion. We will see what AI really will enable. Maybe it's not the AI themselves, maybe something else. Blockchain has a true value for logistic firms, banking transactions, and so on, but it's not the big breakthrough as many of us expected maybe when the hype was there seven, eight years back. Trending one, I don't want to shout out those words, AI and machine learning. I think we're learning every day, getting better and better. I cannot see pretty good in the room because the light is flashing me, but who of, who of you is using AI daily? 70%. I use it daily, uh, meeting minutes and stuff, uh, super cool, uh, convenient, it's basics what I use, but also this presentation, I used uh, a GPT for two, three days to research and make sure I prompted with the research material, is it right, is it wrong, 
It's a big enabler and it writes much faster and much better than I do. I'm a native Swiss, but I cannot speak proper German, nor I can proper speak English. So <laughs> technology helps. And the user, I guess the concern there is one thing. Um, we need to see where people get to, 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 to hang on it. I think we are now um, companies like Google and Microsoft lead the way with co-pilots and so on. I think this is simply great. I will speak about one concern later on when we speak about data strategies. Another one, uh, Internet of Things. I just moved from Zurich, near Zurich to Basel for private reasons. And I love it, uh, just to say. Um, I connected my Wi-Fi router, bought a new Wi-Fi router, and I was shocked. 36 devices in my home. If you would have asked me blindly, I would say 15. iPad here, iPad there, device there, device there. And in the industries like uh, in the pharma, in shipping, in transactions, or uh, in the cooling uh, or AC business, uh, it's a game changer. I guess you can monitor pretty much everything today to an extent where you need to see, does it really add value? I think also here we are in an early stage of transformation, but IoT has a very good value and will help also, of course, to predict much better and take the source at the edge. Uh, this is also closely linked with the edge. On the user experience, IoT, I think I'm very happy. Uh, when I leave my home, I press the button, curtains are closing and so on. This is really cool. But in the end, the big breakthrough we need to see, I see it in the industries like manufacturers and supply chains, for example. Last one about the last decade is 5G. 5G is super great, super fast. We are in Switzerland. We are super blessed with our networks. I think uh, we can go pretty much everywhere with coverage. Um, not sometimes the super fast coverage, but it doesn't really matter. We have coverage. We can do the phone calls. We can browse. I think this has changed industries a lot. It has brought speed. So in your remote area, you don't need a ADSL line or whatever line uh, anymore. You, this is simply enough. You open your um, hotspot and you're connected. I think this is simply great. Uh, there's also some concerns in 5G. This is still there and this will be the same for 6G. About the pollution, 5G on the high uh, microwave lengths. Um, if you want to have a good breakthrough in buildings, you need uh, satellites and some, uh, micro satellites. And this uh, is a fear for some people. I think we need to be aware about that shift. However, 5G, I guess, without that, we wouldn't have uh, been able to bring all this speed together there. I have a funny quote when I speak about 6G in a minute. So these technologies, sometimes we ignore and I learned a lot and I did the research. I'm a tech guy. It's a hygiene factor. We believe they're just there. I'm a tech freak. I want to know every year something new. I think they enabled millions and billions of transactions, empowered us in new ways of doing things. And I think uh, many of them have not yet done the breakthrough as we believed. AI is the next question mark. How far it will go, we will see. I think uh, the benefit is great, much greater than uh, the investments we did, and uh, I think this is also one area I want to conclude on the looking back. If you look forward, some of them are quite clear which technologies. Let me start again with numbers. If I look to the numbers, again, uh, 100 billions of transactions, uh, reductions, and so on. And these are the nice buzzwords you see of many tech companies. That's why I don't make a wee presentation today because I don't like events where people speak about companies. They should get the glimpse out of the company with the content, it's my belief. There's a lot of potential for us all together there. And what I mean with us, I mean the ecosystem, the partner systems we used uh, in our ecosystems, I think it's simply mind-blowing. 6G network, I think in two years we will see the first field tests predicted. And let me bring my funny quote. Yes, with 5G, I can load the move in 30 seconds. I might be able to do it in two seconds, but I still have not solved my problem. I can consume it not faster. So I still want to watch the movie in the same space. So I guess the, the game changes in the industries, in the access uh, for doctors, remote surgeries, whatever. Although here I would also challenge, is really the 5G, 6G uh, network the right platform to use it? Is it safe enough? If something happens, you don't want to have an open surgery on your heart when the network drops for whatever reason. You know, you get my point, but I think this is by nature coming, and I think uh, this will also bring the bring next breakthrough there, and this will also shift forward uh, the mobile market uh, quite significant. My f one of my favorite ones is the brain-computer interface. Even today, 
if you, look, if you Google something or you think about something, next day it's on Instagram or somewhere you see a post about it. And I, I sometimes ask myself, how do they know that? I think there's already today algorithms, they know if you do this and this and this, most likely it will go in this direction. So the brain-computer interface, I would volunteer tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock sharp, if I could get a chip to be more healthy, more safe, um, to get my data so out of this, I would go for that. And if you can help me to predict a healthier, more stable life, more controlled life, I think there's a lot of things going in. The big constraint is also here data, protection, safety, who wants to make the first step. But I guess technology will bring this brain computing interface to the next level quite soon. It's also linked with two other technologies coming now. First about digital twins, I guess all of you have seen these fancy robots in the factories. Uh, you can simulate one by one um, a ship or a machine or a generator. I think this is also just a start of technology. I think when you can really real-time simulate each transaction, predict the maintenance, I guess industry is doing a lot of investment in this area. I guess, uh, we and I believe there's a lot of shift coming in this direction, which makes it very good. Let's imagine um, I just had a small fracture in my foot. I didn't believe the doctor till she proved me on the system. It's still analog, uh, one scan, and then you flip your foot, you do another scan. And when you do this, um, these stories, I guess, uh, Digital Twin can really simulate you real-time everything uh, from food intake and everything you want to do. Uh, also here, the big shift will be the industries, uh, especially again, manufacturing companies, for example, uh, to simulate. I think Digital Twins, I'm a big fan. It makes virtual reality really closer to us. Um, we need to see where is the use case, where it makes sense and where it doesn't make sense. Synthetic biology, I think this is also one area. We have heard this morning already some presentation about biology uh, next steps. I, I believe um, the genetics area, we are on the forefront. And if I could bet, I would bet in the next 10 years the, the drug production goes much, much faster. The quantum hub in Basel, uh, we have machines that are much faster. We, we can uh, use from algorithms. So if you do the right thing from biologic down to the data drain, this will help us uh, to be much faster uh, there with medicines. But still, uh, there are some uh, um, things like cancer out there. We don't have the breakthrough done with all the data we have over decades, if not more. Um, it's still an area where we need to want to work together. I think there's a lot to be done now with AI, ML, where there could be a breakthrough together in this area. Also here, the concern about data will remain. Hyper-personalized AI, this is my hate love. This sometimes I have a big argument with my wife. I called you, I said, yeah, <laughs> but I switched off my phone or I put it on mute and silent, don't disturb, because I'm simply overloaded with notifications. And I'm uh, quite agnostic in my company. I tell the guys, after 6 a.m., uh, p.m., sorry, <laughs> switch off. You deserve your off, uh, day off, and if it's urgent, uh, call uh, and don't wait on uh, on Teams. I sent your Teams message five minutes ago. Yes, I'm in a meeting. I think this will go in a way that you can predict your personal actions to an extent that's maybe for some too much. But I think there's also a lot of benefit when you can predict something, you look at something, have you thought about ABC product or ABB services, things you don't have access if you don't simply know. I think this is something to watch where this hyper-personalized uh, AI will bring us. Um, and I try to believe and uh, to control where I keep my data. I cannot, I'm not sure actually if I know everything today, if they're picking banking data and everything. Uh, but this can help us also in this area to bring data closer to us and be an enabler for us. Then the quantum, I mentioned this uh, 10 minutes back. Quantum, there will be the quantum internet one day. The next platform, uh, we speak many people here about Web3. Um, going forward, quantum is, as Tommy said this morning, at the very early stages. It will not replace the traditional computing. There will be still small computers happening here and there, but when you have multiple millions of transactions, quantum will be the next way, and there will be platforms. The company I used to work before, we had also a Europe-based quantum solution for uh, machine learning, which was sold to CERN. It's a public uh, known. I think there's a lot to be done in this direction. And once this is enabled to be shared, I guess then we get the real power out of quantum. And this is what is quantum internet all about. The benefit is for the society. In the end, for the research, you get much faster to the, to the source where we need data. A very provocative one is the fusion energy. 
I'm not a nuclear physicist. I cannot talk much about how energy is produced. However, fusion energy, when you take the heat out of the fusion, if you can utilize this better, there's a, you can see the numbers um, behind me, they are remarkable. Now they found breakthroughs. Uh, what my research told me, there will be a breakthrough in this area. And I think Switzerland voted, most of you voted, to go away from nuclear plants. Some of them said yes, some said no. We will see now, electric car and everything has a limit uh, to this, and we need to think about where and how the energy can be utilized, better utilized. I don't think the windmills uh, on each hill is the solution. The water has a limit, and there's a shift in uh, sustainability, and, uh, and, uh, and so on. I think fusion energy is also something we need to watch, where the future energy is produced and utilized much more efficient. Automated autonomous system, I still happy I can drive my car. Um, even my car enables quite a lot if I want to do so. I think this is also by, by logic a lot of things that we will see soon. Uh, Self-driving buses, uh, Swiss Post is trying this actually since a couple of years already uh, with a mixed success. I think people still are afraid to go in machines, they do everything themselves. But if you go to the airport of Zurich, if you go to E, you go in a the train, there's no uh, driver in the front and back, it just goes left and right. And uh, it's one simple example where there's a shift coming going forward. Holographic displays, I guess there's a lot Meta is doing, Google is doing. We see um, now this uh, partnership with Ray-Ban, for example, is something to watch. I think now at least the Googles get, you can see through them, uh, you can see the eyes, you can make eye contact. It's a very different game changer. We will see a lot in the future. Here I'm still challenging what technology will be useful for the normal user, what will be useful in a, in a factory or in a production site, for example. But I think there's a lot happening. And there are some machines where you can bring Bruno in front of another room, you really have the feeling this guy is sitting there or talking there. And it is remarkable and I think we will see much more in this direction. Needs a lot of capacity, a lot of energy, we will see how far it goes. One day we will beam, I will not survive that most likely. AI driven emotion recognition, this is also linked with two other points I mentioned before. Emotions recognition are important, so the actions you do to predict your next step, I think this is very clear in the logic step going forward. AI driven VR, how much it's a breakthrough or not, we will see, as I told you before. I have my question mark, if it's the next big, the big third shift of the history, question mark. So I call it, we are at the turning point. We are in a very interesting time. I'm really happy to, uh, that I can meet so many of you outside. We are here for you. And to be witnessing what we've done the last decade and what lies ahead. And the last quote here on the slide is maybe the most important one. We don't know everything what happens tomorrow, and this is simply okay. And we should, uh, we should create a couch in the company where we work for. It's okay not to know everything. We will learn together and fail together and repeat and succeed. And this is the way we should shift. Wipro, we are doing a lot of technology. We are 250,000 people worldwide. Two thirds of our profit go back in the philanthropic projects, donations, universities in Switzerland, for example, power coders. We are in the quadrants on the top right almost everywhere in Switzerland, recognized good, uh, great place to work, top employer. Just the white line research scored second. I think this is just a little marketing, so we know our stuff in IT. And with this, I really hope um, you see what we could do, but you also see we cannot do it alone. We invest a roughly 100 million in venture companies. There's a venture day on the 19th of November in Zurich about where we believe in the next future uh, unicorns. And this is where we invest together. Some of them use in Switzerland, some of them not. Uh, you're invited there. Let us know if you want to participate in this day. It's happening in Zurich on the 19th. We are better together in the, in the tomorrows. With this, for those who take the actions, I guess and they will succeed tomorrow. That's a quote I put up on the Partner Analyst and Advisor Day four weeks back in Zurich. I think this is where I makes me happy every day to move forward. And with this, I hope I could give you a, a bit of time back and the time forward, an idea of what we believe, what technology will enable you. And with this, I'm at the end. I'm leading Vipro Switzerland since a bit more than five months. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much for this super interesting presentation. Uh, we have now a couple of minutes uh, for some questions. Who has a question 
for our speaker. I can throw this. We have some. <laughs> oh, oh, you throw it. You don't trust me. Fair. Fair enough. Uh, up here is risky. <laughs> Any questions? While you're thinking about it. Yes. Oh, cool. We have one question there. A press or? Just talk. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned that technology is it going to be like in ten years, in the next ten years, interesting. But from your experience and working and seeing the other companies, what do you believe is the biggest challenge to the companies to actually go into the direction of changing themselves and to be able to implement these technologies in their work? It's a very good question. Yesterday, we, in this off-site dinner, we had exactly this discussion. I just did lately a study in uh, Unis on Garland about boards and the board savviness. It starts with the board of a company. A board give, gives a strategy and a, a demand to a CEO where we want to go. And if the tech savviness or the digital savviness, the new word uh, which is passing around, is not in their heads, the enablement to the people is not given. And if people are not getting the free space to to test things out and the culture is not created for doing this, I think this is the area. On a practical point of view, I think one thing, people say fast, yes, I saw in Dami's presentation and another presentation, people shift budget now to AI, that's good. But then you should know why you do it. Do you have a data strategy? How do you utilize it? What do you want to achieve with these investments? Often testing alone without having a... Um, a clear vision, what you want to achieve with that, is maybe one underlying layer. But in, in the end, it's about education and giving the teams doing the work, the enablement, and the empowerment to test and fail and repeat and succeed one day. Okay. Cool. Any more questions? Oh, sorry, I can't see anything. No, you cannot see anything. <laughs> Hey, hi, Bruno. Uh, quick one. I really loved everything you talked about. I do want to understand one part. You talked about all of these great technologies and how they're going to impact us. This is maybe more for Europe. Uh, do you think Europe opening up to accept these technologies? I'll give you an example. Uh, Apple Intelligence is launched in the US. It already allows people to use on-device AI. Uh, I represent Booking.com, and there's a big discussion going on that, hey, all of these tech is coming up, but Europe, now this could be due to legal reasons, the mindset, is still not in the race. So my question to you is, all of these amazing piece of tech and how can they impact people totally agreed. But then what we need to do to change the mindset also, uh, and maybe my question is more towards Europe. I'm not European. I came from Singapore. So that's why my I, I saw the huge difference there. So what can be done by big companies like Vipro to kind of let the folks know that all of these technologies might have a risk, but the impact is real huge? No, 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 thanks a lot. I love the question. Thank you for traveling from Singapore here. Um, no, I, I live in Amsterdam, oh. but I was working in Singapore before. Okay. <laughs> but I still struggled in Amsterdam because technology is everywhere, but my iPhone can't use on-device AI, and I hate it. So, I'm fully I'm joining you. And this is, I, I goes back to the regulation. Huh? Switzerland has a, spe a special role in the European Union. We all know that, with all gains and with all losses we have. I think we are in an over-regulated market. How much we regulate and how much are we as a user not enabled to use what we want to use? I'm fully with you. I always use a metaphor in every company I work. If you would know what we know, we would be 10 times smarter and especially faster. So we, we need to give the access. So what we do, and that's why I love the initiative like Quantum Basel so much, we do try to influence Europe, the markets with new technologies to break through. And there are some companies that are open to invest in this. They see the market um, needs and uh, the regulations is a pain. And I guess it goes back to this. I was also hoping when I got the better version, I'm a better user. Sorry, I cannot use it in Europe. Uh, it's not nice, uh, but it's one way we can be uh, enabled to this and speak about it, what we want to use. And maybe one day we can lead the way like Quantum Bus is doing, for example, in the technology I shared. Them. But it's regulated too much in my point of view. Uh, the user in the end and the company should be able to decide where, how far they can go as, as long as it's a fair trade. Uh, that's clear. Cool. Thank you very much for these and questions and answers and presentation. Bruno Schenk, thank you very much. Uh, big thank hand for the presentation. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you all. Uh, we have a
10 minute break and afterwards in here we have Fabrice from Google telling us how to navigate uh, complexities in a company. So if you join us again later, looking forward to it. Thank you very much.